malapang walang susuko at kakarating hanggang dulo. Maraming tanong, paano pa ito? May pagkaling lang at may pagdududa. Kailangan lang, tukusin ano ba ang kayo mo? All right, and we are live na nga po mga kaguro. And of course, we welcome you back to Guru Pinoy. And tonight, we are going to be discussing our general education items. Of course, this is still in preparation for let March 2024. Now, as we move on and as we go over the different items until we take the mid-review examination. Sa mga papunta na po tayo sa inyong mid-review, we are done with all the items under your diagnostic test. And so, we, we, are, uh, we are currently preparing you for your mid-review na po. Okay, so again, your mid-review is going to be by next year na po in January. And so, of course, again, tonight, our general education items are all going to be uh, subject specific now. So tonight we will be discussing bio sci and phi sci items. Okay, so sana po handa na kayo. And of course, batiin ko lamang lahat ng members ng Team Pablov, lahat ng ating Let Babies for March of next year. Ganon din po yung mga malapit na malapit ng maging LPT, so yung mga members ng ating Team Skinner, baka bukas na po, ayan na, parating na yung inyong resulta. Handa na ba kayo maging LPT? No? So, uh, 
isang tulog na lamang po ang dyan na yan ng result no, ng ating uh, let September 2023. And of course, we are expecting to see the results by tomorrow. Okay, so we are all ready to welcome our new LPTs by tomorrow. Okay, so again, good evening po sa inyong lahat. I'm still uh, your Guru Pinoy Coach Mech. And tonight again, we will be discussing Gen Ed under BioSci and FISI. No? So, uh, these are our scheduled classes for the remaining days of December. No? So again, tonight we have uh, BioSci and FISI, Fundamentals of Math and also Algebra with Coach Toto, our let March 2023, your SPLE top one. And of course, we have Coach June on Monday next week. For social science, various topics, I'm going to be handling your Filipino various topics on Wednesday next week. And another session pa rin po with Coach Toto on the 15th. Okay, so that's going to be on about stats, I think, no? stats and probability yata yung uunahin ni Coach Toto on the 15th. Now, ongoing pa rin po yung ating civil service review naman no? sa mga magtitake ng ating CSE ongoing po. As you can see, this weekend you are going to have your clerical reasoning that's for the sub-prof level. And of course, we have your verbal reasoning that's on Sunday naman po for both levels of the prof level and the sub-prof level of our civil service examinations. And of course, mid-review examination naman po this weekend para sa ating mga majorship students. Now, that's for the LEP majorship. And meron din po tayong special uh, events na no? nandiyan po tayo on the 22nd. That's going to be uh, Friday. That's going to be your free face-to-face -face review in Bacolo. That's going to be with me and also with Coach June. And on the 23rd, we will be in Iloilo. No? Kasama ko pa rin po dyan si Coach June. Okay? So very exciting mga kaganapan. And of course, very exciting din yung bukas. No? Lalabas yung results ng ating Team Skinner Babies. Okay? So again, uh, yan po yung ating mga uh, scheduled classes for this December. And of course, yung going pa rin po yung ating Hybrid Let Refresher Certificate Program. Diyan naman po sa Hong Kong, na sa lahat ng ating mga OFW students in Hong Kong and in Macau. This, of course, is in cooperation with Capstone College. So again, we are offering C CPE certificates. And this is specifically for those who have graduated no, under the old curriculum. So this is our LEP Refresher Certificate Program. And if you'd want to join us, meron po tayong Saturday group and we also have our Sunday group, di ba? Parang that's entertainment lamang po. And so you can contact Capstone College. You see their uh, WhatsApp number on your screen right now. That's 644-303-88. Or you may also visit their office on Jan Pusila sa Winglock Street, nasa Shungwan in Hong Kong. Okay, so again, that is our hybrid lab refresher certificate program for all our OFW lab takers in Hong Kong and in Macau. All right. So again, this is Gen Ed, General Education, Bio Sci, and Phys Sci discussion. Now, this is my major. But of course, before we start with our discussion, as we always do every night, let us all start with our opening prayer. So, samahan niyo po ako mga kaguro. Dear Lord, I come to you to ask for your guidance and direction in this study session. I ask that the Holy Spirit fill me with strength, creativity, and understanding to get through my studies without difficulty or sin. Help me hold my focus and attention. Help me to retain all that I learned. Please make my mind sharp and keep distractions at bay. If any part of my studying is weak or lacking in some way, let it be revealed so that I may correct it. Thank you for this opportunity to learn. Amen. All right, now again, this is general education, bio sci, and fee sci items. Paki like na po, love, and of course, publicly share our video. May kaakibat po na swerte at biyaya ang pag-share ng ating videos publicly. You may also tag your friends. No, maraming salamat for all those 
who have tagged their friends. Gaya na lamang ni Ma'am Mary Claire Danga. Ayan po, nakikita ko. Tinagpo niya yung kanya mga friends. And of course, uh, you can also start a watch party. No? Assalamualaikum po sa lahat ng ating mga Muslim brothers and sisters. Hello, Ma'am Nobayma Balang Makasama. Okay, one of our Muslim sisters. No? Good evening po. Good evening sa ating lahat. Again, share na po ng ating video. And if you are part of Team Pavlov, Section A, pake uh, comment po ng letter A, no? Team Pavlov, Section A, represent. Nasaan na ba? Yung mga members ng ating Section A sa Team Pavlov. Team Pavlov, Section A, nasaan po kayo? Okay, nasaan po kayo? Nasaan po kayo? Team Pavlov, Section A, ayon Si Ma'am Essie, uh, Ma'am Esselin, si Ma'am Jenny Ann Banyasha, si Ma'am May Montefalco, good evening po. Ma'am Bernadette Lingayo. Ma'am Wien Lasiste, good evening po. Ma'am Crisaline Fabia. Okay, Ma'am Anne Marcelo, I can see some who are indicated as Facebook users. So, Sir, Sir Johnny Sombise, good evening po. Okay, Ma'am Dayan Katamisan, good evening po. Now, what about the members of Team Pavlov Section B? Mag-ingay po, Section B. Paki-comment po ng Section B. Section B or B sa ating comment box. Team Pavlov B. Team Pavlov, uh, Pavlov B. No, ayan, ayan. Nakikita ko na yung ating Section B. Ma'am Marisol Gumamay. Ma'am Lala Vliogo, good evening po. Aha, uh -huh. Facebook user, Ma'am Jane Nunieza, Ma'am Hanilin Margalio. Good evening, Ma'am Maria Fe Malibiran. Good evening po. Si Sir Bradley Del Castillo from Team Pavlov Section B, no? So kung ikaw po hindi pa member at ikaw ay medyo nalilito, anong batong uh, Team Pavlov, no? So again, our Team Pavlov babies are those who will be taking the let in March. And of course, meron na po tayong dalawang sections, so sections A and B. And so po, pwede pa rin po kayong humabol, no? although tapos na po yung ating promo, no? kahapon po na natapos yung ating promo, pwede pa rin po mag-join sa Team Pavlov. No? So dire-diretso po yung ating pagtulong sa mga members ng Team Pavlov until the day that they take the let. That's going to be on March 17th, 2024. Okay? So sa mga team replay naman po, hello, good evening po sa inyong lahat. No? Sana po ay mag-enjoy kayo kahit na-replay na lamang po ang inyong panonoorin sa mga members natin. Nandiyan po sa YouTube channel. Hello, good evening. Sa mga nanonood po sa atin uh, ng free, no? Diyan po sa ating Facebook page. Good evening po. And of course, later, if you'd want to become a member of Team Pavlov so that you can watch our full-length video, and of course, you can download our files, just send a message to that Facebook page, no? Sa Facebook page po, kung ka, uh, saan po kayo uh, nanonood at the moment. Okay? So, good evening, good evening. Let us all start with question number one. Okay, again, um, remember, no, as we go through the different items, do not forget to type in the, the, the item number, of course, the letter of your choice. No, so as I've mentioned before, no, paulit ulit po mini mention ko, those people who are actively involved in our discussion, yun po, yung mga pumapasa at yun po, of course, yung mga nagtatap sa ating licensure examination for teachers. Good evening, ma'am. Naima from UAE. Okay, good afternoon po yata dyan. Hello po. Ingat po kayo lahat. Okay, we start with item number one. Okay, number one, medyo may pagkamahaba. Okay, number one, you measure the length of a fish six times. Each time you find it to be 125 centimeters long. In reality, the fish is actually 135 centimeters long. No? So you are off by five uh, by 10 cm. No? Which of the following statements is true? Letter A, you are both accurate and precise in your measurements. Letter B, you are accurate but not precise in your measurements. Letter C, you are neither accurate nor precise in your measurements. Or is it letter D, you are precise but not accurate in your measurements? What do you think is the right choice for number one? From Maluso Basilan. Good evening po, Sir Alexis Neil Dagunan. Good evening po sa mga 
tagabasilan. Okay, so uh, essentially, your number one is asking you for the difference between the terms accuracy and precision. Okay, so anong nga ba yung pagkakaiba ng accuracy and precision? No? So uh, minsan ating iniisip na parehas lang yung accurate and precise, no? but in science, in the world of science, they are actually very different terms. No? So magkaiba po yung terms na accurate and precise. Now, by the way, it is pronounced accuracy, okay? So, yung stress po ay nasa first syllable. Accuracy, hindi po accuracy, no? Accuracy is wrong. It should be pronounced as accuracy, okay? So, accuracy and precision. I see a lot of letter Ds. Mom Rose, good evening from Zamboanga City. Okay, what is your choice? Letter D for item number one. You are precise but not accurate. And ang ating pong tumpak na choice dito for number one, ligwa kaya? Or tumpak kaya for item number one? The tumpak na choice here is letter D. You are precise but not accurate. Okay, so tama po, no? You are precise but not accurate okay let's take a look at your slide no so that means uh this person or these measurements have precision but it or they do not have accuracy no so hindi sila accurate but they are precise bakit no bakit po coach ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba between accuracy and precision so ito po no accuracy and precision are not the same thing sabi ng ating slide when you say accuracy again your stress is on the first syllable hindi po accuracy but accuracy okay so accuracy means true to intention that means malapit ka po sa actual value okay so true to intention malapit sa target no that means you are accurate for example sa ating po kanina measurement sabi ng inyong sitwasyon kanina or sabi po ng ating question kanina the length of the fish is actually 135 cm no pero malayo siya sa 135 kasi yung measurement niya was only 125 so that's 10 cm off no so medyo mahaba na po yung 10 cm di ba and so inaccurate nga yung ating measurement okay so again when you say accuracy you are true to your intention you are near the actual value no yan po yung ibig sabihin ng accuracy but when you say precision you are true to yourself that means magkakalapit ang inyong measurements okay so as you can remember kanina po sa ating sitwasyon anim na beses po niyang measure yung uh, fish the fish is actually 135 cm yung measurement niya was 125 cm so hindi po accurate but precise yung kanyang measurements kasi every time no for each time that the person has measured the fish it was always 125 centimeters so magkakalapit or the same yung kanyang measurement pero malayo sa actual value no so yung hint po ninyo actual value is accuracy okay so actual value is accuracy malayo siya so 135 so it was not accurate but it was precise kasi po uh, malapit at parehas nga no equal yung kanyang measurement each time that he measured the fit Okay, so that is the difference between your accuracy and precision. Okay, that's before or, or that's the difference between your accuracy and precision. Uh, sir JV, walang live sa Pablo Group? Meron po sir. Pakicheck po sa ating events. Okay, so maaari pong nasa events. I-check nyo lamang po. Uh, we are currently live on our Facebook page on the two sections of Team Pavlov, no? so section A and B, and of course also on our YouTube channel. Okay, so pakipuntan po yung ating events, uh, maari makita mo po siya sa ating events, okay? And so, ang ating pong choice doon, no? sabi ng ating choice, your measurements were precise but not accurate. So sana po klaro ang difference ng ating accuracy and precision accuracy 
true to your intention, very near the actual value. But precision, true to yourself or your measurements are near each other, near each other, okay? And so, your choice was letter D. Congratulations sa mga nakakuha ng tumpak na choice. And of course, sa mga nanigwak, move on ka agad. Mas mabilis pa yung pag-move on dito sa Guru Pinoy kesa sa pag-move on nyo sa breakup ng Katniel. Okay? Number two, what is the difference between a bar graph and a pie chart? A bar graph and a pie chart. Letter A, they are the same thing, just referred to by two different names. No? Uh, letter B, oh sorry, no, wala yata yung letter dito. No? This should have been letter B. Okay, so letter B po yan. A bar graph shows percentages within a square. And a pie chart shows percentages within a circle. Letter C, a bar graph uh, typically represents exact numbers, while a pie chart represents percentages. Or letter D, a bar graph shows exact numbers within a bar, and a pie chart shows exact numbers within a circle. Aba. Okay, medyo nagkakagulo tayo, medyo nakaka-confuse yung mga items natin tonight because of course, no, may mga differences. Sinatanong tayo ng differences. So, kung medyo blurry yung ating konsepto, no, sa ating uh, mga items dito, hindi mo masasagot kung ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba, no? So, ano yung pagkakaiba ng bar graph at ng pie chart, okay? So, what is your choice? I see a lot of Letter C sa ating comment box. Tumpak kaya ang letter C. Okay? Or pangalawang ligwak na kaya ito for tonight's video. Sure kami sa C coach, sabi ni Ma'am Tess. Abang, yabang. Okay, sure na sure. All right, letter C. Sabi ni Ma'am Tess, no, for number two, a bar graph. Typically represents exact numbers, exact numero, while a pie chart represents percentages. Ang tumpak na choice po natin dito would be letter C. Tama po yan. Congratulations. Sa mga nag-letter C, sana naintindihan po ninyo kung bakit letter C at hindi lamang gumaya kayo no, sa mga uh, nakikita niyong sagot dyan po sa ating comment box. Okay, so letter C, a bar graph daw, typically represents exactong numero while a pie chart represents percentages. So tama po yan. Letter C is our choice. Okay, now these are the different types of graphs that we have. As we all know, napaka-importante po ng ating mga graphs kasi kapag ka gumamit tayo ng graphs, mas klaro, di ba, yung mga numero. Kaysa naisulat lamang, no? pag nakasulat kasi yung mga numbers natin, uh, sometimes it's very difficult for us to analyze our results. no But through your graphs, you can easily see the results, you can easily make generalizations and conclusions. So sa ating mga researches, we'd always be using your graphs to represent our data. Di ba? So here... You have the different types of graphs, no? Your bar graph, your histogram, your line graph, and your pie chart, no? Pie chart mo. Sometimes your pie chart is also called your circle graph, okay? So, minsan po tinatawag din siyang circle graph. All right, now, uh, we mentioned some uses of your bar graphs the last time that we had our live session on Monday. We said that uh, you use your bar graphs if you have different categories, okay? So if you have different choices, different categories, you may use your bar graphs, right? For example, the question is, which is your favorite love team in Philippine cinema? Okay, so Kathneel, Liz Ken, uh, um, ano pa ba? JD and Kim C, whatever, no, Kim. Pao, okay? And so, if you have different choices or different uh, categories, for example, different types of movies, po pwede nyo pong gamitin ang bar graphs. At sabi kanina ng choice natin, uh, your bars here would represent exact numbers. No? So, kunwari dito, no? uh, frequency mo is 5, between 5 and 6, and so yung orange mo dito would represent 5.5, okay? Your green colored bar here would represent 3, di ba? Your blue colored bar here would represent Four. So, exact pong numero na yun represent ng ating pong bar graphs. Now, yung histogram mo is very similar to your bar graphs. The only difference is that wala pong uh, spaces no, between the bars. There are no spaces between the bars. So, pwede din po siyang mag-represent ng the same items that you are representing in your bar graphs. Now, this one is your line graph. When you uh, have a line graph, 
this is very useful to show the trends or changes no showing the trends or changes in a certain day for example no in a certain hour no so um, to show the changes or tre or trends you can use your line graph okay so for example you say uh the number of customers in a store no every hour so one o'clock for example ito ay one o'clock uh, you only had four customers at 2 p.m., for example, you had six customers at three, you have three, you know, and so on. Okay, so to show changes or trends, you can use your line graph. And of course, you have your pie chart here or circle graph, no? as we have mentioned kanina sa ating choice C. Your pie chart would represent percentages. Tama po yan, no? Because your pie chart would show the relationship of a part versus the whole, no? So pinapakita niya, ano ba yung relasyon ng isang parte with the entirety, no? So usually, yung mga examples mo dito, your, how you spend your monthly allowance, so for example, 5% for your, for uh, coffee, okay? Medyo mababa, no? 20% for food, no? So um, 5%, another 5% for your boarding house. No? So percentages nga yung nakikita natin sa ating pie chart because it shows the relationship of a part to the whole. Okay, so letter C, ang ating pong tumpak na choice for item number two. Okay, uh -huh. we go to item number three, which of the following is a physical change, physical change, okay? We are talking about a physical change. Would this be letter A, burning a piece of paper? Letter B, melting ice? Letter C, mixing vinegar and baking soda? Or letter D, baking, co uh, baking cookies? Baking coke tuloy. Okay, what is your choice? What's your choice for item Number three. Number three, ICBs. Tumpaki ang letter B. Melting ice is an example of physical change. Again, please do not forget to share our video. Paki publicly share po ng ating video. Sabi ni Ma'am Yoni Rose B for brillantes. Okay, taas kamay ng mga brillantes. All right, letter B for item number three. Tama kaya ito, no? So, again, we are looking for a type or an example of a physical change. Physical change. And ang tumpak na choice po natin dito for item number three is letter B. Okay, so tama po yan. Melting ice is an example of a physical change. Let's take a look at your slide. No? Ano nga ba yung pagkakaiba ng inyong physical change sa inyong chemical change, okay? Now, sabi dito, no, in a physical change, mat, uh, your matter changes form but not chemical identity. Kumbaga, uh, ganun pa rin siya, no? Yung chemical composition ng inyong matter is the same. It only changed its form, no? So, matter changes form, shape po pwede, but not its chemical identity. Chemical change mo naman, a chemical reaction occurs and new products are formed, no? So, usually we'd say, Sa inyong physical change, again, no, makinig, in a physical change, no new substance is formed. No, walang bagong substance na na-form. Okay? So, matter is still chemically the same. But sa inyong pong chemical change, there is a new substance form, no? And isa pang pagkakaiba, sa inyong pong physical change, maaari mo siyang ibalik sa kanyang original na forma. Okay? So, for example, nag-melt yung ice, uh, naging tubig na siya, no? Liquid water, ilagay mo siya sa freezer, po pwede mo pa rin siya ibalik into your ice, no? Pero sa chemical change nyo po, hindi na siya na ibabalik sa kanyang original form. Kunwari, meron kang fresh na banana. Sana all may fresh banana. ba? Now, once your banana has undergone a chemical change and it has rotted, no? So, uh, nabulok yung saging, kapag ka nabulok na po yung saging, hindi nga na po siya maibabalik sa kanyang fresh form, ba? Because a chemical change has already occurred, you cannot revert it to its original form, okay? So, um, your chemical change, again, you cannot revert it to its original form. Physical change, you can still revert it. In a chemical change, a new substance is formed. In a physical change, there is no 
whole new substance formed. Okay? So, yung mga changes in matter po natin, for example, melting, freezing, evaporation, condensation, no? These are all just physical changes. Physical uh, physical changes lang po silang lahat. Shredding paper, no? When you shred your paper, papel pa rin naman po siya. When you chop wood, wood pa rin siya, no? Hindi siya nagbago. Okay? Mixing of marbles, for example, no? They're, they're, so, they're, they're all still marbles. But when you burn your wood, no? Nawala na. Uh, it would turn into ashes, no? Naging abo na siya. Hindi mo na siya ibabalik sa kanyang original form. So usually, yung mga uh, examples po natin sa chemical changes would be burning, yung um, decay, no? Rotting, for example, your fireworks, no? Diba? Burning pa rin siya. Vinegar and baking soda, there's going to be a chemical reaction, okay? So this is considered a chemical change, alright? So letter B, ang ating pong tumpak na choice. Okay, we go to number four. An example of of an exothermic reaction is letter A, evaporation of water. Letter B, the breaking of bonds. Letter C, when two chemicals are added together. Or letter D, the lighting of a match. What is our choice? Facebook user, I do not see your name po. Uh -huh. Kapag ka nagbago na siya, ang hirap ng pabalikin pa. Aray! Okay, so habang kayo ay may relasyon pa, dapat po ito ay inyong pinangangalagaan para walang magbago, di ba? Aha. Uh -huh. Kailan yung last filing for March po? Um, it's going to be on January, if I'm not mistaken, January 17th or 16th po yata, no? between those two dates. Okay, so January pa po yung last filing for March na let. Okay, what is our choice? Aba, A, B, C, D. Uh, January 16 daw po. Okay, so thank you so much. January 16 daw po. A, B, C, D, yung inyo pong sagot. Nalito ang taong bayan. Hindi alam ng taong bayan kung ano yung ating hinahanap dito. Okay, again, we are looking for an exothermic reaction. No? Kapag kasi nabi mo pong thermic, thermic. Or thermos in science, this means heat. Okay, so heat, init, no? And when you say exo, exo, di ba? Pag sinabi mo pong exo, palabas, going out or giving off. So simply saying, no, when you say exothermic reaction, this is a reaction that gives off heat. Okay, so a reaction that is giving off heat, no? Yung kabaliktaran po ng inyong exothermic ay endothermic, endothermic pumapasok yung init, di ba? Ang exothermic po, nilalabas niya yung init, di ba? And so, ang tumpak na choice po natin dito, very obvious, the right choice is lighting of a match, di ba? Kaya nga, hindi natin siya inawakan yung posporong nakalight, di ba? Because it is hot, no? When uh, water is evaporating, you need uh, heat, di ba? Kaya ka nagpapakulo ng tubig, nilalagay mo siya sa apoy kasi gusto mo mag-evaporate ang tubig, di ba? So, it is an endothermic reaction. Breaking of bonds, you need heat, you need, te you need temperature to break the bonds in a chemi uh, chemical, no? When two chemicals are added together, it's also endothermic, okay? Usually, it is endothermic. And so, yung pinaka-obvious na choice po natin dito ay letter D. Letter D is tumpak, ayun, may mga tamang hula. Okay, congratulations sa mga manghuhula. Alright, so sana po klaro, exothermic reaction, it gives off heat. Endothermic reaction, it absorbs heat. Alright, so letter D for item number four. We move on with item number five. What do both prokaryotes and eukaryotes have that is involved in translation? Okay, that is involved in in translation would this be letter a endoplasmic reticulum letter b ribosomes letter c nucleus or letter d peptidoglycan what is our choice okay what is your choice aba i see a lot of letter b is tama kaya tama kaya letter b for item number five 
Item number five, would it be letter B? No? So we are looking for that part of your prokaryote and also of your eukaryote that is involved in translation. Now, bago natin po i-discuss ang pagkakaiba between your prokaryotes and your eukaryotes, tingnan muna natin yung ibig sabihin ng term na translation. No? Kapag ka sinabi mo pong translation, this is the production of proteins. Pagawa ng proteina. Okay? So making of proteins is termed as translation. And so, out of all of your choices here, ano nga ba yung inyong organelle na involved in making of proteins? Na? The correct choice here would be letter B. Ribosomes is tumpak. Okay? So, ribosomes, letter B, ang ating pong tumpak na choice. Let's take a look at the differences between your prokaryotes and your eukaryotes. Okay? So, here are your eukaryotic cells and your prokaryotic cells. Now, when you say karyo po, karyo or karyon, this means nucleus. Okay? So, again, karyon or karyo means nucleus. Ang you sa inyong eukaryotic cell, this means true, true, totoo. No? So, may totoong nucleus. May totoong nucleus. And so, when you say eukaryotic cells, these are types of cells that have the true nucleus. They have true nuclei. And they also have organelles bound by plasma membrane. Kapag ka sinabi mo naman pong organelles, these are the tiny structures inside the cell. So, kumbaga, when you say eukaryotic cell, my true nucleus at my organelles. My true nucleus at my organelles. No? Those are your eukaryotic cells. Ang prokaryotic cells mo naman po, pro means before. Okay? Pro means before. So this means uh, these cells have no nucleus no? before the existence of nucleus. They do not have any nucleus, no? so they don't have any nucleus, and they also do not have any organelles. No? But usually we would say there are some parts of a cell that you can find in all types of cells. No? So unang-una po, plasma membrane no? or cell membrane, lahat po ng klase ng cells may cell membrane. Your ribosomes na lahat po ng klase ng cells ay may ribosomes. So even mitochondria, we would consider that as uh, a part of all types of cells, okay? So cell membrane, ribosomes, mitochondria, those are all uh, found in all types of cells, okay? So sana po klaro, prokaryotic cell, walang nucleus, walang organelles. Eukaryotic cell, my nucleus, my organelles, okay? So yung hinahanap natin kanina, ribosomes, ayan po yung ribosomes, ito yung mga tiny dots no, na gumagawa ng protina sa ating pong cells. Now, we go to number six. Okay, number six. These organelles contain enzymes that help digest food and cell debris. Would this be letter A, ribosomes? Letter B, endoplasmic reticulum? Letter C, lysosomes? Or letter D, Golgi bodies? What's your choice? Okay, what is your choice for item number six? Okay, and of course, after this, medyo madugo, we will be talking about the different organelles, uh, different parts of the cell. Okay, I see letter C is lysosomes. Lysosomes, letter C, tama kaya ang lysosome? Okay, so these organelles contain enzymes that help digest food and cell debris. No? So, ibig sabihin, nagda-digest siya ng food at yung mga cell debris, uh, when you say debris, basura, di ba? Surplus, yung mga hindi na kailangan within the cell. And ang tumpak na choice po natin dito would be letter C, lysosomes. And lysosomes are sometimes called the suicide bags, okay? Suicide bags. Bags na ginagamit ng cell for suicide, okay? So kung meron kailangan i-digest, kung meron kailangan tunawin dahil hindi na, um, hindi na, um, wala, nang, wala nang halaga no? inside the cell, they would use the enzyme inside your lysosomes, okay? So, letter C, lysosomes po ang ating tumpak na choice ng lysosomes, the suicide bags of the cell. Ayan, sabi ni Ma'am Abby, tama po yan. Suicide bags. Let's take a look at the anatomy of your animal cell. No? So these are the different parts of your cell. Makinig, makinig, no? makinig po. 
these are the different organelles or the different parts of your cell. I've already mentioned the cell wall kanina. Sometimes this is uh, called your plasma membrane, no? Plasma membrane or your cell wall. Ayan po siya. Siya yung pinaka-boundary ng cell mo. Yung function po niya is to control what goes in and out of the cell, no? That's your cell wall. Now, we start from the inside, no? This one right here, the pink circle or the red circle, you call this the nucleus. Nucleus, okay? The nucleus is called the brain of the cell. Siya po yung utak ng cell. Bakit? Unang-una, kinokontrol po niya lahat ng mga processes na nangyayari inside the cell. No? So the nucleus is the brain of the cell. It controls all the processes that happen within the cell. Another very important function of your nucleus po is that it holds your genes. It holds the genetic information or what you call the DNA, diba? your deoxyribonucleic acid. Your genes are also found in your nucleus. Now, meron kang parang egg yolk po dito na sa loob ng inyong nucleus. This is called the nucleolus. Nucleolus. Na? Ang nucleolus po ninyo, napaka-importante din po ng kanyang function because the nucleolus makes your ribosomes. Diba? Napag-usapan natin kanina yung ribosomes. Ang nucleolus nyo po ang nagpo-produce ng ribosomes. Okay? So the nucleolus produce or produces your ribosomes. No? So ito yung inyong ribosomes, yung mga uh, dots, no? the tiny dots are called the ribosomes. And as we have mentioned, this is performing the function of production of proteins. Now, gumagawa po siya ng proteina. It makes proteins through the process we call translation. That's your ribosome. Now, going out, going out of your uh, nucleus, no? meron po tayong dalawang ER dito. Ito po, ER, ha? endoplasmic reticulum, although I cannot see the other one, no? the other type, your endoplasmic reticulum, meron ka pong dalawang klase nito, meron kang rough, rough, magaspang, no? rough ER, and smooth ER, no? rough and smooth ER. Now, yung rough ER mo po, rough ER siya, kasi pag tinignan mo siya under the microscope, rough po siya. Bakit siya rough? Dahil meron po siyang ribosomes, di ba? So, meron siya mga tuldok-tuldok, uh, okay? So, meron siyang tuldok-tuldok. Yung tuldok-tuldok na yon ay yung mga ribosomes na makikita mo siya sa rough ER. And so, ang function po ng inyong rough ER ay the same sa function ng inyong ribosomes. Gumagawa din po siya ng proteins. Now, there is another type of ER, as I've mentioned, no, your smooth ER. Ang smooth ER naman po, hindi siya magaspang dahil wala siyang ribosomes. Ang function naman po niya is to make your uh, fats, di ba? a so production of fats no production of your fats that would be the function of your um your smooth er okay so carbohydrates uh, some other parts or some other substances that are needed by the cell okay so that's your smooth er smooth er now going out still you have this no yung kidney shaped na uh, structure mo dito this is called your mitochondrion mitochondrion or mitochondria Okay, mitochondria. This is the powerhouse of the cell. Powerhouse of the cell po siya kasi dyan po ginagawa yung energy. No? Yung energy ay tinatawag pong ATP. No? Ma Maaaring nakita nyo na ito sa ibang items natin. ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Yan po yung energy inside the cell. At ginagawa po siya sa mitochondria. Kaya yung mitochondria po ay tinatawag na powerhouse of the cell. Okay, powerhouse of the cell. Ito yung inyong lysosome, no? ito yung ating pinag-usapan a while ago, the suicide bag of the cell. It has digestive enzymes then it can digest any parts of the cell na hindi na gagamitin. Okay? Next one, Golgi body. This one right here, Golgi body, sometimes also called Golgi complex. no? Golgi complex. Golgi body. Yung Golgi complex nyo po, para siyang gift wrapping section ng cell. Okay? So, unang-unang function ng Golgi body mo is to sort 
sort the products of the cell, no? Isusort niya. Ito, kailangan to inside the cell. Ito, kailangan to outside of the cell. And if there is a need na meron siyang kailangan baguhin, babaguhin, no? Imomodify po ng inyong Golgi body. If there is a need to transport it outside of the cell, itatransport po ng inyong Golgi body, okay? So again, as I mentioned, the Golgi body is like the gift wrapping section of the cell. It sorts, modifies, and transports materials from the cell, okay? Next one, what else is not mentioned? No, your cell membrane, cell, ah, this one pala is a cell wall, sorry, no? Ang cell membrane po natin, bakit may cell wall eh? Animal cell po ito, no? Mali ito, no? This should have been your cell membrane. Okay, so cell membrane or plasma membrane, napag-usapan na po natin, no? The gate of your cell controls what goes in and out of the cell. Microtubules, ito po yung mga nagpo-form ng mga skeleton, no? inside your your cell cytoskeleton nagpo-form ng ng structure ng inyong pong cell cytoplasm this is the um, liquid part of your cell na so that's the liquid part of your cell the cytoplasm diyan po nakasubmerge lahat ng uh, different parts of the cell what else Centrosomes, this one can only be found in your animal cell at ito po ay involved sa cell division. Okay, so cell division, kailangan po yung inyong centrosomes. Uh, later, I will show you, no, uh, once we get to your... Uh, once we get to your um, cell division na part, okay? Meron tayong mitosis mamaya na question, okay? And so, ang ating pong tumpak na choice again was lysosome, no? But bago tayo pumunta, bago po tayo pumunta sa ating next item, okay? Let's take a look at the difference naman po between your plant cell and your animal cell, no? Plant cell and animal cell, there are certain structures that you can only find in your plant cell. There are certain structures that you can only find in your animal cell. No? So centriole, as I've mentioned kanina, siya po ay makikita lamang sa inyong animal cell and this one is involved in cell division. Now, sa inyo naman pong plant cell, meron kang tatlong parte na makikita mo lamang sa plant cell. No? Una-una, chloroplast. Ito po yung nag-hold ng inyong chlorophyll at ito po yung site no, kung saan po nangyayari yung inyong photosynthesis. Okay, so this is your chloroplast here. It holds the chlorophyll and it is where your photosynthesis would happen. Cell wall, no? So as I mentioned kanina, mali po yung ating illustration. Dapat po cell membrane yon because we were talking about your animal cell. Your cell wall can only be found in your plant cell. And ang component po, tinatanong din po ito ng let, no? Ano yung component ng cell wall ng plant cell? Yung inyo pong magiging sagot will be cellulose. Okay? So, cellulose cell wall. And of course, you also have your central vacuole. Central vacuole. Some types of cells, even animal cells, po pwede pong merong vacuole. Pero sa plant cells po, we call this central vacuole dahil nasa gitna po siya ng plant cell at napakalaki po ng central vacuole kasi siya po yung storage ng tubig. Okay? Okay, as we all know, water is very important for our plants. Okay, so kung hindi siya importante, ba't pa tayo nagdidilig, di ba? So your central vacuole in plant cells hold the water molecules. Okay, so again, your centriole can only be found in your animal cell. In your plant cell, you can find your chloroplast, your cellulose cell wall, and your central vacuole. Okay, central vacuole. All right, we go to the next item, no? <sighs> Hingang malalim. Sana po ay meron tayong na-retain, no? Meron tayong naintindihan. Balikan later kapag medyo blurry ang daming napag-usapan, di ba? Kapag ka meron nag-CR, I'm pretty sure na no, medyo lost kapag ka bumalik, no? But uh, later po, of course, if you are a member of Team Pablo, po pwede pong i-replay yung ating video. Balik-balikan and of course, your PDF is going to be available after this discussion. Okay, number seven. Number seven. In which stage of mitosis do the chromosomes line up along the middle of the cell? Letter A, anaphase. Letter B, interphase. Letter C, metaphase. Or letter D, telophase. What is your choice? Aba, I see a lot of letter Cs. Aha, uh -huh, tama kaya? Sigurado po ba kayo sa inyong choice or sigurado po kayong kayo'y gumaya lamang sa mga nakara nakararami, no? Uh-huh. What do you think is the right choice? 
Kaway-kaway sa mga nakinig sa bio teachers nila no nung high school or not sci teachers sa college. Okay? Kapag ka hindi nakinig, ligwa sa item na ito. Okay? So mitosis, we are talking about the different stages of mitosis and what we are trying to find out is that stage where the chromosomes are lined up along the middle of the cell. And ang tumpak ng choice po natin dito is letter C, metaphase. Tama po, metaphase. Ang ating pong tumpak ng choice, sabi ni Facebook user, tulog na lang ako nito. Okay? Uh, now, these are the different stages of mitosis, no? So, usually what we uh, use in teaching is PMAT, the acronym PMAT. PMAT, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Napaka-importante po na alam nyo yung PMAT kasi minsan yung uh, tinatanong po ng inyong let ay ano yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng different stages ng mitosis. Hello po, Ma'am Christine Acabo. Batiin ko lamang po isa sa ating mga veterana. And of course, ngayon po ay... Um, LPT na po siya, no? two years ago pa yata si Ma'am Tien. Hello po, good evening. Okay, so prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, that's PMAT. And we have kaso, okay? Kaso. Kaso po, this would represent the acronym naman sa mga pinaka-importanting events during each stage. No? Sa prophase, letter C, coiling of chromosomes. So, ayan po yung inyong chromosomes. No? So, DNA siya actually. No? So, DNA siya, but during the time that your cell would undergo mitosis, nagko-coil po yung inyong DNA to form this ribbon-like structure, which we call your chromosomes. Now, metaphase, what happens here is the alignment of chromosomes. Uh, kaya po siya yung ating sagot, di ba? Alignment. Uh, the chromosomes are lined up along the middle of the cell. Sa anaphase mo po, what happens is the splitting of your sister chromatids. Ayan, nag-split po sila. And sa telophase mo po, letter O, the opposite of prophase. Okay? Opposite of prophase. Again, that's PMAT kaso. PMAT kaso. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, kaso, coiling, alignment, splitting, or separation, and opposite of prophase. Okay? So, uh, in memoria po, pimat kaso. Pimat kaso. Pimat kaso. Prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, coiling, alignment, splitting, and opposite of prophase. All right? And so... Uh, ayan po yung inyong centriole, no? As I've mentioned kanina, we have an animal cell here. At uh, minimension ko kanina, yung centriole po helps during your cell division. Ayan po kasi yung centriole, no? Nagiging source po siya ng spindle fiber. Ang spindle fiber po, ito pong parang yellow, dyan po nakadikit or dyan po naka-attach yung inyong chromosomes. And uh, so nakaka-help po siya during cell division, okay? So that's a function of your centriole found in your animal cell. Okay? So, batiin ko ulit, LPT with the help of Coach Mech, sobrang laking tulong. Salamat po, Coach Mech and Guru Pinoy. God bless po sa future LPTs. Again, isa po sa ating mga um, veterana, no? Three years ago na ba? Or two years ago na po uh, si Ma'am Tin, no? Okay, so number seven po, ang tumpak na siya is letter C. Letter C, we go to... Item number eight. Where does visible light fall on electromagnetic spectrum? Would this be letter A, between infrared and ultraviolet? Letter B, between shortwave radio and television? Letter C, between microwaves and infrared? Or letter D, between an X-ray and gamma ray? Okay. What is our choice? Sir Roger Abalos. Good evening po. No, thank you, Guru Pinoy. Sabi ni Sir Roger Abalos. Isa din sa ating mga LPTs. Okay, two years ago na din yata, Sir Roger. Hello po. Good evening po sa inyong lahat. Okay, letter A. Nakikita kong sagot ninyo. Ito naman ay under, of course, sa inyong physical science. No? Physics na po ito. Kaway-kaway sa mga na-fail sa physics. At kaway-kaway din po sa mga nakinig sa kanilang physics teacher kahit na medyo boring, di ba? Mahirap intindihin ang physics. 
All right, letters A and B. Ano nakikita kong choice niyo sino kaya yung mananaig for item number 8. Yung question natin napakadali, no? Saan mo makikita yung visible light? sa inyong electromagnetic spectrum. When you say visible light, ito po yung visible sa atin. Okay? So, ito po yung nakikita natin. So, where would we find your visible light in your uh, EMS, no? Electromagnetic spectrum. Ang tumpak na choice po natin dito is letter A. Tama po yan. Between your infrared and ultraviolet rays. Okay? Tingnan natin bakit, no? Tuturuan ko po kayo kung paano po mamemorya lahat ng um, types of lights, no? Sa ating po electromagnetic spectrum. Okay? So, yan po. Ito po yung ating mnemonics. Rare monkeys insist very unusual eczema gifts. Ayan, napapanahon, no? Xmas. I know, hindi po po pwedeng palitan ng X yung Christ, no? But here, of course, we have to use X para lamang po maalala ninyo na X-ray po siya, no? X-ray po itong nire-represent ng ating Xmas dito. Again, rare monkeys insist very unusual Xmas gifts. That's your radio wave, your microwave, your infrared, then you have your visible light, your ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma. Okay? And so, ang tumpak na choice natin kanina was letter A. Sabi ng letter A mo, between infrared and ultraviolet rays. And so, that would be tumpak. Okay? That would be tumpak. Sabi ni Sir Roger Avalos, you will not regret. Tatak Guru Pinoy, the best ka, Mamek. Maraming maraming salamat po. Okay? So, again, in memoria, rare monkeys insist very unusual Xmas gifts. Isa pa pong tinatanong dito ng let, no? Kung ano yung may pinaka mahabang wavelength, okay? And so, yung inyo pong magiging sagot would be your radio wave. Pinaka mahabang wavelength would be your radio wave. Pinaka maiksi, no? The shortest wavelength would be your gamma ray, okay? Remember, the wavelength and the frequency is going to be... Um, they're going to be opposites, okay? So, the longer the wavelength, the less frequent it is. The shorter the wavelength, the more frequent it is, no? So, yan po yung mga tanong ng let. Tandaan po, no? Alin yung may pinakamahabang wavelength? Your radio wave. Alin yung may pinakamaigsing wavelength? Gamma ray. The longer the wavelength, the less frequent, no? Mas mababa yung frequency. The shorter the wavelength, the higher is the frequency. Magkabaliktad po sila, okay? They are inversely proportional, okay? But letter A for this item. We go to number 9. What is the charge of the plastic comb when it loses some electron when rubbed in silk cloth? Would this be letter A, positively charged? Letter B, negatively charged? Letter C, neutral? Or letter D, zero? What is your choice? Okay, so again, no, as a formal reminder, if you'd want to watch the full-length video and download our files, be a member of Team Pavlov. Very easy. Just send a message through this Facebook page. Okay, number nine, letter A, positively charged. Tama nga ba? Meron din naman nagsasabing letter B, negatively charged. Nako, hati po ang taong bayan. Sino kaya ang tumpak at sino naman kaya ang ligwa for this item? Okay, so what is the charge of the plastic comb when it loses some electron when rubbed in silk cloth? Okay, pansinin po ninyo, it loses, loses some electron. And so, ang tumpak na choice po natin dito is letter A, positively charged. Positively charged. Bakit ba positively charged? Now, let's take a look at your illustration. Okay, so here are your three subatomic particles. Kapag kasi nabi mo pong subatomic particles, ito po yung iba't ibang parte ng atom. No? Remember, when you say atom, it is the basic unit of matter. Basic unit of matter, it is indivisible. Diba? So, hindi mo na siya uh, chop chop no? But uh, atom itself, an atom itself still has 
several parts no? and we call these three parts right here your subatomic particles okay now we have three types of this no magkakaiba po sila in terms of charges yung electron mo po ay negatively charged yung proton proton for positive it is positively charged and your neutron is neutral no kaya siya tinawag na neutron again electron is negative Proton, proton positive, and neutron is neutral. Wala po siyang charge. Another difference among these three is that their location, no? Another difference is their location. Yung makikita nyo po sa nucleus, nasa gitna ng inyong atom, would be the proton and the neutron. Ang electron mo po ay wala sa inyong nucleus. No? Your electrons can be found in what you call your energy shells. Kasi yung electrons mo po, whenever your atom would form a bond, no, would form a bond with another atom or with another element, yung electrons po actually yung uh, umaalis sa kanyang energy shell or nakikishare no, sa another electron. No? So your electrons are the ones that are involved in bonding. Okay, So your electrons are not in the nucleus. Your electrons are found in the energy shell. Now only the protons and the neutrons can be found in the nucleus of your atom. Okay? Uh, another difference here, wala lang dito, no? but another difference here, hindi pinapakita, another difference is in their mass. No? So mass, sa kanilang bigat. Yung inyo pong proton and neutron, halos magkaparehas yung bigat. No? 1 AMU, 1 atomic mass unit. Pero yung inyo pong electron is very light. And so we usually say in science, the mass of your electron is negligible. Negligible. Halos po pwede mo nang i-neglect or ignore. No? Hindi mo siya makakount or hindi mo siya measure because it is very, very light. Okay, now balikan po natin yung ating question. Sabi kasi dito, it has lost some electron. No? Kapag ka-stable po kasi yung isang bagay, stable yung isang element, Dapat po yung number ng electrons niya at ang number ng protons niya would be equal. Dapat equal po yung number of electrons and your protons para walang charge yung isang elemento. Pero here sabi, it has lost some electrons. At pansinin po natin yung charge po ng electron is negative. And so kapag ka nag-lose siya ng negative charges, that means mas marami na ngayon ang positive charges niya. No? Hindi na equal yung positive at negative niya kasi nag ng negative and so positively charged na po yung ating plastic comb. Okay? So letter A for item number 9. Alright, we go to item number 10. What is commensalism? Letter A, an association where both species benefit. Letter B, an association where the larger species benefits and the smaller species is harmed. Letter C, an association where one species is killed or inhibited and the other organism is not significantly affected. Or letter D, an association where one species benefits and the other species is not significantly Affected, what is your choice? Aba, I see letter D is. Uh -huh. Good evening, Ma'am Larissa Corpus Hove, newcomer, no? newbie natin. Hello po, good evening. Okay, what is our choice? Okay, what is our choice for number 10? Usapang relasyon tayo, di ba? Usapang relasyon. Usapang relasyon. Gustong gusto niyo to eh. Usapang relasyon for item number 10. Good to hear your voice again, Ma'am Met. Batiin ko lamang po si Ma'am MJ Mupada. Naka-six takes ako sa exam. Pero nung nakapag-enroll ako sa Team Bruner, mas nahirapan ako sa mga weekly quizzes. Parating failed ako. Makinig kayo sa inyong ate, no? LPT na po si Ma'am MJ Mupada. Again, naka-six takes po siya bago makapag-enroll sa Team Bruner. Team Bruner po dati, no? Yung previous na uh, team natin, no? Sa Gurong Pinoy. Naiinis ako sa self ko. Sabi po niya palagi siyang field sa ating quizzes. Okay, nainis ako sa self ko, pero that feeling of frustrations and disappointment, mas nagpursigi ako lalo. Lahat ng videos, pa ulit ulit kong pinapanood sa bawat oras sa araw-araw. At 3am, boses nyo na 
Ah, uh, boses niyo na po, naririnig ko habang nagluluto, naglalaba. Till matulog na ako. Basta don't easily give up, mga future LPTs. Okay? So, congratulations of course, Ma'am MJ Mupada. No? So, uh, mantakin niyo yun si Ma'am MJ ay nakapag six takes po bago maging membro ng uh, Team Brunner ng Gurong Pinoy. And of course, after that, after she has become our member, ay naipasan niyo po yung kanyang licensure examination for teachers. Uh, Ma'am Rashrina, kapag ka ikaw po ay member ng Team Pavlom, yes po, mauulit niyo po yung ating live. And of course, no, palagi po nating sinasabi, you go back to our YouTube channel. There's so many videos there, no? maaari pong makatulong sa inyo na malaki. And make sure that you are leaving a comment para hindi po kayo paulit-ulit sa panonood. Uh, leaving a comment is your hint na, ah, okay, napanood ko na itong video to. Okay, what is our choice for number 10? No? So we are talking about your commensalism, one type of your symbiotic relationship. No? Commensalism here, ang tumpak na choice po natin dito is letter D. Tama po yung letter D. No? An association where one species benefits and the other species is not significantly affected. Okay, not significantly affected. Meaning, yung isang species has benefited. Remember, ang species po na word, po pwede po siya sa isa or marami. No? Species is used for both singular and plural. No? So sabi dito ng inyong commensalism, yung isang species po would get some benefits. The other, spe uh, the, the other species is deadma. Okay? So deadma, wala siyang significant effect. No? Well, hindi siya apektado. So deadma. Now let's take a look at your slide. So here are the three different symbiotic relationships that we have, you have mutualism, commensalism, ito yung nasa question natin, and parasitism. No? So, mutualism, the feeling is mutual, both of you are happy. Diba? So, uh, the pollination of a flower is a type of mutualism. The bee gets the nectar and the flower gets pollinated. No? So, both are happy. Commensalism, one is happy, the other one is not affected. Dead man. No? So, commensalism, your whale is unaffected, your barnacles, on the, on the other hand, find food. No? Yung barnacles mo, ito yung mga nakadikit sa katawan ng inyong whale. No? So, your barnacles, uh, your barnacles are happy because they have food, but your whale is actually not affected. And of course, you have parasitism. One is happy, one is sad because the other one is harmed. No, so parasitism, the cat is harmed. The cat gets skin irritation. Well, the tick is happy because it uh, it feeds on cat's blood. Okay, so ito naman ang mga parasite natin. Mga parasite. Okay, so anong klase po ng relasyon meron kayo? Ikaw ba ay parasite? Okay, mutual ba yung inyong relationship? Parehas po ba kayong happy? or dead ma ka na po ba? No? So, isip-isip kung healthy pa po ba yung inyong relationship. Okay? Ayan, sabi ni Sir Danny Temblor, commensalism ako, happy siya, hindi. Okay? Hindi, ah. Hindi po. Ibig sabihin, wala pong epekto. Wala pong, wala, walang effect, no? Dead ma po siya. Siya parasite, sabi ni Ma'am Joanna. Yan si Andrea parasite. Sabi ni Sir Carlos Sibog, hindi pa nakaka-move on. Okay, we go to item number 11. A scientist is running a test for her or of her hypothesis. Which step of the scientific method is she executing? Letter A, experiment. Letter B, analysis. Letter C, observation. Or letter D, conclusion. What is our choice? What's your choice? I 